So the next other aspect that we're going to go over that was on the agenda is ownership. Can anyone tell me what ownership means in the most basic sense? Right, it's like you're owning, you're owning your world, right? You're owning your piece of the pie. It's a pretty simple aspect, but it's something that I think we miss the mark on a lot, as, as especially like young leaders, right? I think, I'm not saying it always happens, but sometimes is it pretty easy to always blame your boss that something went wrong, or I didn't get this, or I wasn't provided that, or, you know, you hear a lot of that, right? It's not like a sensing session. I just, I'm just aware. I just know, right? Um, but that's not the mindset you need to have, right? The mindset you need to have is ownership, and that no matter what happens, you own your team, your squad, whatever element that you own, and you're going to make it positive, and you're going to make it good. Does that make sense? Especially out here, this is going to happen a lot, where you're going to go out to a range, and you're going to have this big plan set out, and then maybe the polis are going to show up, and we're going to get kicked off the range. Because why? This is, this is Poland, right? This is not America. So it's their country. If they want their land to train on, they're going to take their land, and they're going to train on it. And we're not going to whine about it. We're not going to be upset about it. We're not going to complain about it, right? Because this is their country, this is their land. But it's something to think about in a mindset, right? It's kind of a mindset slash attitude when it comes to ownership where if, if it goes a little bit sideways on you, you're still responsible for everything. So whatever training that you had planned that got canceled, you still are responsible for doing that training. Does that make sense? You might need to adjust it. You might need to change where you do it. Maybe it's in the back of the barracks now because the land is gone. Or maybe it's out just right outside the gate on the flat range because the other big range is gone now, right? But that's the, the mindset of ownership is that everything that your team or does or doesn't do is because of you. Does that make sense? And you need to own everything that happens, right? So like the BC said, I agree with him wholeheartedly 100% that the most important person in this battalion is the team leader. I have always felt that way. I will always feel that way. Out of all my combat deployments, I know for a fact that when it comes to combat, the team leader wins that fight every time. It's not the platoon leader. It's not the platoon sergeant. It's not the first sergeant. It's not the commander. The team leader wins the fight every time. Why? Because he's there. The team leader is the first fighting leader. He is the only fighting leader that is present in the middle of the battle. You are, it's the leader that is exchanging bullets with the enemy, right? The platoon sergeant, the first sergeant, the commander typically are not, right? Like the team leader is exchanging bullets with the enemy and leading that battle, right? The team leader decides, in my opinion, it's again, just my opinion. It's not like army doctrine that says this, but it's the team leader that wins the fight every time. Now other people might disagree with me and that's fine, but just know like that's where I stand when I look in this room. And that's the mindset I need you guys to have too, right? You need to understand that like if you go into battle, you decide whether you win or not. Not your squad leader, not your platoon sergeant, like not the first sergeant, because you're the one fighting. Does that make sense? Like you decide who wins this battle, not your, your leaders. Does that make sense? And you need to have that mindset and you need to own that. You need to have that ownership to know, is your team ready for that, right? Who, who can raise your hand and say, my team's ready right now? Oh, so everyone in your team can do land nav on their own. Everyone in your team can shoot a javelin on their own. All right, well, well, that's what I'm saying. But these are the things that you need to think about, that every single person in your team has to land nav by themselves. Every single person in your team has to be able to shoot a javelin. Every single person in your team has to do a call for fire mission on their own. Every single person in that team has to be able to do, be an expert on all the weapon systems in that team. Like that's the standard you should all be striving for, right? Is that what you're striving for? If there's ever a moment in time that you're not doing something, then everyone should become becoming working towards all of those things. Does that make sense? Like 
and that's the mindset you need to have. You need to have that ownership that if, if we fail at battle, it's because our teams failed. Does that make sense? Because that's the point of battle, right? It's not like the old days, right? And it's not going to be like first sergeant going to go battle their first sergeant, and then whoever wins, like, takes the, takes the land, right? It doesn't work that way anymore. So, um, and again, so the big thing with ownership is like everything I just talked about. You own all of that. All those things that your team should be able to do, that's you. That's on you. And that's your responsibility. And there are no excuses. You can't give me any excuses. You have, you have time to do all these things on your own. Right? I know we have time out here. But this is what ownership breeds, right? You should have this thought process of complete ownership of your team. Does that make sense? Every single person in your team, every single thing that that per like, every single thing and its skill that can be achieved in your team is up to you. Does that make sense? And that, again, so when you have ownership, it leaves no room for excuses, right? You can't say, well, I wasn't afforded this training. I wasn't given the opportunity. I didn't have the chance to do that. Like, all that does is just break down your character, right? Your character is a person. Because ultimately, like what I talked about earlier, like leadership is something we do, right? It's not a job. So it's like it's one of those things where it's like, if I were to like remove my rank, like what is left, right? With this, ultimately, your rank is a piece of cloth, right? It weighs a gram, right? But what 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 are you without it, right? Are you still a leader? Is it still something you can do? Is it still like something that you instill? Is it still something that you can? that you've built a character around yourself that people would follow you regardless of what rank you're wearing on your chest. Does that make sense? Like that's the mindset you need to build towards and that's what you need to move towards and ownership is a huge factor in that, right? Because ownership is gonna build that character because you're not gonna ever have an excuse. You're never gonna blame somebody else because it's on you. It's 100% on you no matter what, just own it. You own it, you can move forward, you can learn from it. But you blame somebody, you shirk away what happened, you won't grow. You won't grow as a human. Does that make sense? Like, the more you lie and d like just uh, alter the truth or um, embellish your achievements, like you're not getting anywhere in life as a, as a human, right? So this thought process of ownership helps you build that character, and then you'll also gain the respect of your peers, superiors, and subordinates. Does that make sense? Um, and the biggest thing of all, I think ownership, it builds a team, right? Because if someone comes up to me and they say, hey, one of your team leaders just did this in your company, what do you think I say? What are you talking about? I promise you already, I live this principle. It's my fault. It's 100% my fault. Does that make sense? I own that, right? If one of my team leaders does something, Sergeant Major yells at me about it, that's on me, right? I don't say like, oh, screw that guy. Can't believe he did that. Terrible. Yeah, you know, it's not my fault, Sergeant Major. He's just a, he's just a bad apple. He's a bad soldier. No, never once. Will those words come out of my mouth? And never once will I do that. Does that make sense? Because I get nowhere. I get nowhere. My organization gets nowhere. That soldier gets nowhere. But when I own it, like that's my fault. Because it, technically it is, right? If I'm, I'm his leader, it's my fault. So then I need to be intentional and purposeful and to make sure this doesn't happen again. So then I reach down, do whatever corrective training, address the issue so that this doesn't happen again. But every time that I say like, oh, that's not on me, that's not on me, that's not on me, that's not on me, it just, nothing ever gets, everything just keeps getting worse and worse. Does that, does that make sense? How does that build a team, right? When you own it, you build the team, right? So when I own the process, I own the mistake, I can then work back up. Does that make sense? And then the whole team sees that, right? The team sees that I own the process, and that we move forward together. Does that make sense? It should be the same for you, right? 
Just because I'm a first sergeant doesn't make any different. Like if I go to Sergeant Instrum, I'm like, hey, your Joe just did X, Y, Z, man. What the, what the hell? Right? His, his reply should not be like, well, you know, he's just an idiot private, first sergeant. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like, that's, that's wrong. That's the wrong mindset. Does that make sense? His mindset should, should be, he owns that. He owns that private. He owns what happens in that team. And he should say, like, roger that. I'm, you know, and internalize the issue and work forward. Does that make sense? And that's the mindset you guys need to have is to own everything that happens in your teams. Roger? Um, go ahead and give me next slide. Did, wait, well, hold on, go back. Sorry, I dropped my water over here. Um, does anyone have something they want to add or they have a question about this ownership principle? First Sergeant, is there something like along the lines of like over ownership? Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that because, so he said, did anyone hear him? So he asked if there was like over ownership, right? So I totally, yes, right? I think what I already talked about when we ended leadership is like balance is key. This is the same thing, right? So over ownership is totally a thing. If, if you internalize your ownership too much, it can break you down, right? Like quick example, let's say, um, let's say I set up an RPFT for like the dark rifle ranger readiness program and I plan it all out and we get out there and we're doing the RPFT and it, it, everything starts going awry, right? It starts, my plan starts messing up and I'm like, oh man, I messed this up and I, I, I'm owning it, right? Like I'm owning that this got messed up but if I take it like to, like to the core of like who I am, like I'm a failure and think like I messed this up and if you take it too far, then you're just throwing yourself into like self-loathing, right? So like, Ownership is like, hey, I own it, and it has to be a healthy dose, but you can 100% throw this ownership principle out of whack by um, internalizing it too much, attaching too much emotion to it, and, um, and attaching it to like your identity, right? So as long as you don't do those things, you should be okay. But as long as you just apply the principle of ownership that everything your team does or doesn't do is on you, period, and just deal with things as they come up, that like you'll be good, right? But again, balance is always key. So, and that's with everything that we talked about. All of you know, all those leadership styles, you can't use all of them all the time or one just all the time. Anything else about ownership before? Yeah, Move on. yeah. Sure. Right. So I would say when, so I think I understand your question. I'll try and address it. So I think what she's saying is like, like if you had something that came up um, totally out of your control, right? Like, um, like hurricane, natural disaster. I mean, like a, like that type of event. Or if um, something just comes out of left field, then. Um, we still own the process in the sense that if there was something that we were going to try and do that was interrupted, we need to own the process to make sure that it is, like, has a get well plan or that we're making up for that. Does that make sense? Like, don't, if, you're, if your subordinates see you shirk away what you were going to do because something came up, i.e., we're going to the range and there was a hailstorm and range control said we couldn't use the range anymore because of possible flooding coming up then we left the range and you're like, oh, well, we're just going to skip that training and we're going to move on. Like, there should be a get well plan so that you're, you're showing them, like, you're still owning the process that what you wanted to do, you're still going to achieve, even if there's obstacles outside of your control. But again, we still don't, don't, don't cast a blame, right? When it's uh, a headache that is caused outside of your control, then we just deal, right? Um, those, those headaches are easy. The headaches we cause internally, those headaches are painful, and those ones are more irritating. But um, does that kind of make sense? 
Um, anything else about ownership before we move on to the next one? All right, next slide. All right, so communication, right? So communication is key. When we're, so we're talking about our mindset, and we've talked about how we, we do everything, but having the right mindset, we still need to be able to communicate, right? Because if you have the best mindset in the world, but you can't communicate it, what does that mean? It really counts for nothing, right? Um, so first thing I want to talk about with communication is critical listening. Now, here, this is like a big thing that I kind of get passionate about sometimes because I think where leaders miss the mark on critical listening a lot of times is that there's two parts to critical listening, right? Number one, you should be critically listening to what is being said to you in the moment. Does that make sense? So like if your subordinate is speaking to you about some concerns, you should be critically listening very well on what they're saying, right? We're taking in the information, that's part one. Part two in this is that when you're critically listening, you're also critically listening to yourself. Does that make sense? So like as I speak to my subordinates, I'm critically listening to how I'm communicating to the subordinate. Does that make sense? So I'm critically listening to myself to know if I'm communicating effectively and to assess and reassess, right? If my delivery in this moment is not working, I need to reassess my communication method because it's not being effective. Does that make sense? So I think that's where a lot of leaders miss the mark. They work on public speaking, they work on not saying ums, they work on being eloquent, but I don't think they necessarily always focus on how their message is actually being received, right? So sometimes it's like one of those where, well, you're just gonna receive my message because that's my message. Make sense? But I don't, I don't agree with that. I think it's important as us as leaders and in this organization that you critically listen to yourself. Does that make sense? Um, so every time you're addressing your men, you should be thinking about how is this being received? Is it effective? And like when I'm assessing and reassessing this communication method, is it something I need to rinse and repeat because it did work? Or is this something that I need to reevaluate in the future and do differently? Does that kind of make sense as far as the critical listening piece? Like, you got to listen to yourself, speak to your men outside the box. Does that make sense? Um, so, and again, so, and then when we speak, like I've talked about, we speak with precision, purpose, and intentionality. Does anyone know what I mean by that? Like, when we speak with precision, purpose, and intentionality, like, what, what do I mean by that? Like, when you're speaking to your Joes, what's up? It's, it means that you are, you are communicating exactly your intent. You are, um, I'm trying not to use the same words, but. It's okay. What you're communicating to your Joes is exactly what you want them to carry out, and it's exactly what you have in mind. Sure. Right? What else? Right. There's a reason and purpose behind everything that I'm saying and how I'm saying it, right? So the what and the why. So I like that. But, um, so yes. And then also think about when you are delivering it, like how are you delivering it? Right? So speak about precision. It's kind of like the, the how. Right? Kind of like what he was saying. It's like, how am I delivering this? So in the precision, i.e. as an example, um, I don't know. I don't know if everybody in this room has heard me yell, but I've yelled at times. And I don't yell for the sake of yelling. Right? I don't yell because I'm an unstable human. I don't yell because I'm a yeller. I don't. Right? I have a purposeful, precision, intentful purpose for why I'm yelling. Like, what does yelling achieve? Yelling grabs attention. It builds urgency. It shows intentionality. It shows purpose. It shows importance. Right? There's, there's a purpose to it. 
right? I don't just do it because it's like what I do, right? You don't come into my office and I just yell at you, right? I don't just yell at my guys when I'm speaking to them, right? If I yell, it's because there was a specific reason and purpose and the delivery in the loud voice builds those things we just talked about, right? Urgency, importance, speed, right? Because typically when you yell, you want something done fast, right? Correct? Like, if I was speaking to you all and I said like, okay, so we're going to get up and you're going to exit the room and stack all the chairs in the corner and I will see you all tomorrow and I'll walk off. Like, how quickly would you guys stack the chairs and leave the room? Like, probably just in a very natural, slow, lackadaisical, laissez-faire way, right? But if I started yelling like, hey, motherfuckers, get the fucking chairs in there and started yelling, everyone would start moving really fast, right? Because it, it would create speed. Does that make sense? And it wouldn't yell because I'm just yelling to yell. It's because maybe I only have 30 seconds to have this room exit and I need everyone out here. Does that make sense? So there's purpose and there's intentionality. And I want you guys to always remember that. Like, um, it's, kind of, um, it's kind of like the whole aspect of like read the room, right? Have you guys ever heard that before? Um, like, if you had one of your Joes that was crying in the corner, would you just go yell at him or her? Like, why are you yelling? Why is this happening? Right? You could. You could, right? But what is, what is it achieving? Is it achieving a purpose that you want? Then Roger, right? Or maybe you don't know what's going on, so maybe it's kind of like, hey, let's come in. Like, would you like to chat? Would you like to go for a walk? Want to tell me what's wrong, right? So there's, it's that whole read the room and be purposeful and precise about what you're doing. Does that make sense? So um, there's like a, there's an end game to things. Does that make sense? Um, and so again, like I have up there, it's like it's always you have to assess and reassess. Like, is your communication method effective? Is the way that you speak and the way that you deliver? Uh, to your subordinates effective. And that's where you always have to assess and reassess. This isn't working. Try something new. Maybe that works better, right? Um, this is where counseling comes in. Maybe your squad leader has counseled you, someone in this room, that like, hey, man, you're really soft-spoken. I need you to get louder, right? And maybe that's because when you're fighting in combat, things are loud and you need leaders to be able to bark orders and move with urgency and move men urgently. Does that make sense? So um, it's just one of those things, but it doesn't mean you bark 24 seven, right? Like we don't have to take things super literal. Does that make sense? Um, and then again, the whole evaluation and reevaluation kind of falls in the same lines, but this is where you can gain feedback from peers. You can gain feedback from superiors on how you're communicating, is it effective, and reevaluate, like, how is it that you uh, deliver that, right? And just have the mindset to communicate effectively, right? It's, it's a very important skill to have, and you need to have the mindset to have effective communication, right? Because if you just have communication on the wayside, then it's, it's going to be something that you're never going to be able to articulate your awesome mindset that you build because you're not going to be able to communicate it effectively. Does that make sense? Um, before we move on to the next topic, anyone have something? Questions, comments, concerns about what we talked about with communication and the, the mindset and being precise and intentional about it? That kind of makes sense about what I was saying with the examples and how we talk and why we do it a certain way. Is that what I'm picking up, what I'm putting down? I know it's a little hot in here, but we've been sitting here a while. But um, go ahead and give me the next slide. All right. And so then I got resilience up here. This is not an MRT class, but this is just an important aspect in having the proper mindset, right? When I talked about earlier, we talked about military mindset, there's combat mindset, there's leader mindset. There's all these mindsets that I, I could make one up right now and throw that, throw that crap on the internet and be famous, right? 
Kramer's mindset. Like, uh, patent it, sell it, whatever. So, um, the big thing with resilience is, like, everyone in here has probably had, like, an MRT class at some point, but this is important for your mindset, right? Again, when it comes to everything we talked about with your leadership style, the communication style, the um, attitude in which we lead, you have to have resilience, right? Like, how can you build a mindset to be in combat and not have resilience? Does that make sense? So like we talked about, when you have that combat mindset, if you were to go to combat and fight the enemy and kill the enemy, well, some of your friends are going to die too, right? And you're going to need to survive combat when it's over. Does that make sense? So you need to have this mindset that you build when you're not in combat, right? So every time there's a negative event, like use it as an opportunity to further hone your resiliency skills and your attitude. Does that make sense? So just some things up here I had was like a no quit attitude. You know, there are no lose situations, right? You can always take the, find the silver lining and make it a positive in some way. Does that make sense? Um, like instilling mental toughness, right? So all of, all of this, like all of resilience is mental toughness, but it, you need to build it on all facets, right? You can build it during PT training, right? Push yourself and your soldiers past what you think you can do physically. And, but the only way you do that is through mental toughness, right? It's the mental toughness that pushes you through those physical barriers where you're like, I'm done. I am done. But you have someone or yourself that pushes you past that point. Now you're f that much physically stronger, but you're that much mentally stronger now too. Does that make sense? You're, you're equally sharpening your mind during PT as you are your body, as long as you're pushing yourself past that threshold of intensity where you think you're done. Does that make sense? Um, maintain perspective, right? This one, this one's huge for me. This one's helped me a ton. Um, just a, a quick story um, to help you guys. I remember I was, I was back at home. I was driving to the gym. Talked to my buddy from, he was, we're in Ranger Battalion together. And uh, the day before, I had done a super heavy leg workout. So like from my, from my glutes down, I was just like, oh, every time I shifted in my chair, I was like, ah. So as we're talking on the phone and my little car play thing, and, and I kind of shift, and I was like, you know, I kind of make a, a grunt, like, ow, ow, my, it hurts. And my buddy asks me, he's like, whoa, what's going on? I was like, oh, I'm just super sore, man. I just, I'm on the way to gym and just hate doing legs. And, and he's like, oh, 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 must suck. You can, you can train two of your legs. So, because you don't know, he only has one leg, right? And I was just thinking, like, man, I felt like a giant a-hole, right? But then at the same time, it was super enlightening to me because then I understood like how, how lucky and grateful I am that I can even still work out two legs, right? I have two sore legs, right? Um, but some, and it's, this is like a really small example, but sometimes people think like you get, it's like self-loathing becomes almost popular, right? Where you're like, oh, you know, even, even catch myself where I'm like, I hate leg day. Like, why did I say that? Like, who says that? Like, why? Right? But I said it. Right? We're not all perfect. But it helped me. Like, his small little jab comment at me for, like, having two sore legs. I was like, well, you're right. And I'm really just lucky to have two sore legs. Does that make sense? But it's like, it's having the right perspective. And it's having the right grounded mentality and mindset that um, it, can, it can always be significantly worse. I promise. Does that make sense? Um, and again, finding the positivity in every situation, right? It's, it's there, right? Nobody likes to work with Eeyore. That's always like down and out about everything, right? So um, be the leader that's able to find the positivity and have the mindset to, to look at things in that way to make sure, because that'll instill the same mindset into your subordinates, right? Next slide. Here we go. All right. So as we're wrapping this up, um, 
again, balance is, is paramount, guys. Everything that I've talked about today, I hope the biggest takeaway, you guys picked up some cool tips, tricks, info, but the biggest thing is that you find balance in all of it, right? Hopefully there isn't, there wasn't any like one thing that I said or one thing that we talked about that was like, man, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, if I do it that way, then I'm gonna be a good leader. Like that wasn't the point of this mindset class. Like the point is that you need to have the positive growth mindset combined with like a combat mindset and like applying all of these attributes together and finding balance and always using a little bit of everything. Does that make sense? So the biggest thing is like never think that there's a silver bullet to anything, right? There isn't a silver bullet that if I, if I do it this way, it's gonna be good forever. Or if I act a certain way, this is gonna work forever. Cause there's not, right? Just like they say it all the time in fitness where like there is no like magic pill that makes you skinny and fit, right? It's the same aspect when it comes to leadership, right? That's your mind, that's your attitude, that's how you communicate. So remember, it's, it, it's the same thing. You gotta have a holistic approach with your mindset, your attitude and your leadership style and how you communicate that to your subordinates. Does that make sense? Um, and again, just making sure you apply like all of these attributes we talked about. You know, ownership being huge, right? I promise you, if you own everything that happens in your team, your team will be rock solid. I promise. Because you won't let anything slide. Because if you own everything, then you should be doing the, you should always be striving for the right thing. So, next slide. Boom! Hail Cobra. And any questions? Nothing? Going once, going twice.